The Great Fall of Adam and Eve and Cain. The creation of Adam and Eve. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 through 27. God formed the man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living being. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. God then planted a garden in Eden and placed the man there to work it and take care of it. Genesis chapter 2, verses 8 through 9. Seeing that it was not good for the man to be alone, God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. While he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and then closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man. The man said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife, and they become one flesh. Genesis chapter 2, verses 21 through 24. God's creation of Adam and Eve illustrates his intentional design for humanity. He created them in his image, endowing them with dignity, purpose, and a special relationship with him. Adam and Eve's creation also establishes the foundation for marriage as a sacred union between one man and one woman, reflecting the unity and love within the Trinity. God's creation of Adam. The creation of Adam is a foundational event in the Bible illustrating God's power, purpose, and love for humanity. In the book of Genesis, the narrative unfolds with God forming Adam from the dust of the ground and breathing into his nostrils the breath of life, making him a living being. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. This act of creation highlights the intimacy and care with which God fashioned the first man, setting him apart as the pinnacle of his creative work. The creation of Adam was not a random or haphazard event, but a deliberate act of God's will. The Bible describes God's intentionality in creating Adam, stating, Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. This verse emphasizes God's personal involvement in shaping Adam and infusing him with life demonstrating his sovereign power over creation. Furthermore, the creation of Adam reveals God's purpose for humanity. God created Adam in his own image, endowing him with qualities that reflect God's own nature, such as intellect, emotions, and free will. Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 through 27. This image-bearing nature sets humanity apart from the rest of creation giving us a special relationship with God and a unique role in his plan for the world. God's creation of Adam also highlights his love and care for humanity. The creation of Adam serves as a reminder of God's ongoing work in the world and his desire for a relationship with his people. As the Apostle Paul writes, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. This verse underscores the significance of God's creative work in shaping us for His purposes and His glory. God's creation of Eve from Adam's rib. The account begins with God declaring that it is not good for man to be alone and that He will make a helper suitable for him. Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. God then brings all the animals He had created before Adam, allowing Him to name them none of them were found to be a suitable partner for him. Genesis chapter 2, verses 19 through 20. It was then that God caused Adam to fall into a deep sleep, took one of his ribs, and from it formed Eve. Genesis chapter 2, verses 21 through 22. As the Apostle Paul later writes, For man did not come from woman, but woman from man. Neither was man created for woman, but woman for man. 
1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 8 through 9. Second, the creation of Eve from Adam's rib underscores the intimate and sacred nature of marriage. When Adam saw Eve, he declared, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. Genesis chapter 2, verse 23. The statement reflects the deep bond and unity between husband and wife as they become one flesh in marriage. Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. Third, the creation of Eve from Adam's rib highlights God's wisdom and purpose in creating the human race. God creating Eve from Adam. God established the foundational structure of the family and the broader human community with Adam as the head. Just as Eve was taken from Adam's side, so the church, the bride of Christ, is spiritually united with him. The Garden of Eden. The Garden of Eden is a central element in the biblical narrative, serving as the setting for the creation and early history of humanity. Described in the book of Genesis, chapters 2 and 3, the Garden of Eden is portrayed as a lush and bountiful paradise, filled with beautiful trees, plants, and animals, all created by God for the enjoyment of the first man and woman, Adam and Eve. The Bible describes the Garden of Eden as a place of unparalleled beauty and abundance. Genesis chapter 2, verses 8 through 9 states, Now the Lord God had planted a garden in the east, in Eden, and there he put the man he had formed. The Lord God made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground, trees that were pleasing to the eye and good for food. In the midst of this garden, God placed the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God commanded Adam, You are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat from it, you will certainly die. Genesis chapter 2, verses 16 through 17. This command emphasized humanity's dependence on God and the importance of obedience to His commands. The Garden of Eden was not only a physical place, but also a symbol of the intimate relationship between God and humanity. It was a place where God walked and communed with Adam and Eve, demonstrating His love and care for them. Genesis chapter 3, verse 8. However, this paradise was short-lived as Adam and Eve disobeyed God's command and ate from the forbidden tree. This act of disobedience, known as the fall, resulted in their expulsion from the garden and the introduction of sin and death into the world. Genesis chapter 3, verses 23 through 24. Despite this tragic event, the Garden of Eden continues to hold significance in the biblical narrative. It serves as a reminder of humanity's lost innocence and the consequences of sin. However, it also points to the hope of restoration and redemption through Jesus Christ. In the New Testament, the Garden of Eden is referenced as a foreshadowing of the ultimate paradise to come. Revelation chapter 22 verses 1 through 5 describes a new heaven and a new earth, where there will be no more death or sorrow, and where the tree of life will be restored bearing fruit for the healing of the nations. Description of the Garden of Eden The Garden of Eden, as described in the book of Genesis, is portrayed as a lush and fertile paradise, created by God as a dwelling place for the first man and woman, Adam and Eve. The Bible provides us with a vivid picture of this idyllic garden, highlighting its beauty, abundance, and significance in the biblical narrative. One of the key features of the Garden of Eden was the presence of the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Genesis chapter 2 verse 9 tells us that these trees were in the midst of the garden, emphasizing their central role in the narrative. The tree of life symbolized the source of eternal life and communion with God, while the tree of the knowledge of good and evil represented the choice between obedience and disobedience to God's command. The garden was also watered by a river that flowed out of Eden, providing water to nourish the land and sustain the plants and animals within it. Genesis chapter 2, verses 10 through 14 describes this river, along with its four branches, which watered the entire garden and contributed to its fertility and abundance. In addition to its physical beauty and abundance, 
The Garden of Eden was a place of intimacy and communion with God. Genesis chapter 3, verse 8 tells us that the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. This image of God walking in the garden suggests a close and personal relationship between God and humanity, highlighting the harmony and peace that existed in the garden before sin entered the world. The Garden of Eden is not merely a historical location, but also a symbol of God's original intent for humanity, to dwell in harmony with Him and creation. It represents a state of innocence, beauty, and abundance that was lost due to sin, but is ultimately restored through Jesus Christ. In Revelation chapter 22, verses 1 through 5, we see a glimpse of the future restored paradise, where the tree of life will once again be present bearing fruit for the healing of the nations. God's command to Adam and Eve regarding the tree of knowledge. In the Garden of Eden, God placed Adam and Eve and gave them a command regarding the tree of knowledge of good and evil. This command was a test of their obedience and a demonstration of their relationship with God. This command was clear and straightforward giving Adam and Eve the freedom to enjoy all the other trees in the garden except for this one. The command regarding the tree of knowledge was not arbitrary, but served a specific purpose in God's plan. It was a test of Adam and Eve's obedience and a way for them to demonstrate their trust in God's wisdom and authority. By obeying this command, they would show their love and reverence for God and acknowledge His sovereignty over their lives. However, the command also presented Adam and Eve with a choice, to obey God's command and live, or to disobey and face the consequences. The choice highlighted the gift of free will that God had given them, allowing them to choose between good and evil. Unfortunately, Adam and Eve chose to disobey God's command and ate from the tree of knowledge. Genesis chapter 3, verse 6 describes Eve's temptation and decision to eat the fruit, stating, when the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it. This act of disobedience had profound consequences, leading to the fall of man and the introduction of sin into the world. Genesis chapter 3, verses 7 through 8 describes the immediate effects of their disobedience, stating, and the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Despite their disobedience, God did not abandon Adam and Eve. He sought them out in the garden and confronted them about their sin, providing them with clothing and a promise of redemption through the seed of the woman. Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. The Temptation and Fall The story of the temptation and fall of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden is a cautionary tale about the consequences of disobedience and the deceitfulness of sin. This account, found in Genesis chapter 3, reveals the cunning tactics of the serpent, the vulnerability of humanity to temptation, and the far-reaching effects of sin on the world. The serpent, described as more crafty than any of the wild animals God had made, approached Eve and questioned God's command regarding the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Genesis chapter 3 verse 1 records the serpent's deceitful question to Eve. Did God really say, you must not eat from any tree in the garden? This question was designed to cast doubt on God's goodness and His command, planting seeds of disobedience in Eve's heart. Eve, in response to the serpent's question, clarified God's command, stating that they were allowed to eat from any tree in the garden except for the tree of knowledge, or they would die. Genesis chapter 3, verses 2 through 3. However, the serpent deceived Eve by twisting God's words and promising that if she ate from the tree, she would not die, but would instead become like God, knowing good and evil. Genesis chapter 3, verses 4 through 5. Tragically, Eve succumbed to the serpent's deceit and ate from the tree, and she also gave some to Adam, who was with her, 
and he ate it as well. Genesis chapter 3, verse 6. In that moment, sin entered the world, and the consequences of their disobedience were immediate and profound. Genesis chapter 3, verses 7 through 8 describes the immediate effects of their disobedience. This passage highlights the shame and guilt that Adam and Eve experienced as a result of their sin, leading them to hide from God's presence. God, in His mercy, sought out Adam and Eve and confronted them about their sin. He pronounced judgment on the serpent, Eve and Adam, outlining the consequences of their disobedience. Genesis chapter 3, verses 14 through 19. Despite their sin, God provided for them by making garments of skin to clothe them. Genesis chapter 3, verse 21. Demonstrating His care and provision even in the midst of their disobedience. The temptation and fall of Adam and Eve serve as a sobering reminder of the consequences of sin and the importance of obedience to God's commands. It highlights the deceitfulness of sin and the need for vigilance and reliance on God's grace to resist temptation. In Romans chapter 5, verse 12, the Apostle Paul reflects on the impact of Adam's sin on humanity, stating, Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man, and death through sin, and in this way, death came to all people, because all sinned. This verse underscores the far-reaching effects of Adam and Eve's disobedience, affecting all of humanity and leading to the need for redemption through Jesus Christ. The serpent's deception of Eve serves as a sobering reminder of the cunning and deceitfulness of sin. It shows how easily we can be led astray when we doubt God's word and listen to the voice of temptation. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3, the Apostle Paul warns against the deceitfulness of Satan, stating, But I am afraid that just as Eve was deceived by the serpent's cunning, your minds may somehow be led astray from your sincere and pure devotion to Christ. This verse underscores the ongoing battle against deception and temptation that believers face and the importance of remaining steadfast in faith. The consequences of the serpent's deception were severe. Adam and Eve were expelled from the Garden of Eden, and humanity was subjected to sin and death. However, even in the midst of judgment, God provided a promise of redemption through the seed of the woman. Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, foreshadowing the coming of Jesus Christ, who would defeat sin and death through his death and resurrection. Adam and Eve's disobedience and the consequences of sin. The story of Adam and Eve's disobedience in the Garden of Eden is a pivotal moment in the Bible, marking the introduction of sin into the world and the beginning of humanity's fallen state. This account, found in Genesis 3, not only highlights the consequences of sin, but also points us to the hope of redemption through Jesus Christ. This act of disobedience had profound consequences for Adam and Eve and for all of humanity. The immediate effects of their disobedience were twofold. First, their eyes were opened and they realized they were naked, leading them to sow fig leaves together to cover themselves. Genesis chapter 3, verse 7. This realization of their nakedness symbolizes their newfound awareness of sin and their attempts to hide their shame from God. Second, Adam and Eve's disobedience resulted in their expulsion from the Garden of Eden. Genesis chapter 3, verses 23 through 24 describes God's judgment, stating, So the Lord God banished him from the Garden of Eden to work the ground from which he had been taken. After he drove the man out, he placed on the east side of the Garden of Eden cherubim and a flaming sword flashing back and forth to guard the way to the Tree of Life. This expulsion from Eden symbolizes humanity's separation from God and the loss of the perfect communion with Him that Adam and Eve once enjoyed. The consequences of Adam and Eve's disobedience extended beyond their own lives and affected all of humanity. Romans chapter 5, verses 18 through 19 contrasts the effects of Adam's sin with the gift of grace through Jesus Christ, stating, Consequently, just as one trespass resulted in condemnation for all people, so also one righteous act resulted in justification and life for all people. For just as through the disobedience of the one man, the many were made sinners, so also through the obedience of the one man, the many will be made righteous. Expulsion 
from Eden. The expulsion from Eden marks a significant turning point in the biblical narrative, symbolizing humanity's separation from God and the consequences of sin. This event, described in Genesis chapter 3, verses 22 through 24, reveals the gravity of Adam and Eve's disobedience and the profound impact it had on their relationship with God and their environment. Genesis chapter 3, verses 22 through 24 records God's response to Adam and Eve's disobedience, stating, And the Lord God said, The man has now become like one of us, knowing good and evil. He must not be allowed to reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. So the Lord God banished him from the Garden of Eden to work the ground from which he had been taken. They were not permitted to eat from the tree of life, which would have allowed them to live forever in their fallen state. Thus, God's expulsion of them from Eden was both a punishment and a means of protection, preventing them from living eternally in a state of sin. Second, the expulsion from Eden symbolizes humanity's separation from God. The Garden of Eden was a place of intimate communion with God, where Adam and Eve walked and talked with Him. However, their disobedience severed this relationship, leading to their expulsion from God's presence. The separation highlights the devastating effects of sin on humanity's relationship with God and the need for redemption. Third, the expulsion from Eden represents humanity's loss of innocence and the introduction of toil and hardship into the world. Genesis chapter 3, verses 17 through 19 describes the consequences of Adam and Eve's sin, stating, Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil you will eat food from it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your brow you will eat your food until you return to the ground, since from it you were taken. For dust you are, and to dust you will return. This passage highlights the toil and hardship that would now characterize human existence outside of Eden, contrasting with the idyllic conditions of the garden. Despite the severity of their punishment, God's expulsion of Adam and Eve from Eden also foreshadows His plan of redemption. Genesis chapter 3, verse 15 contains the first promise of a Savior, stating, And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. This verse, known as the Proto-Evangelium, or First Gospel, foretells the eventual victory of the seed of the woman, Jesus Christ over the serpent, Satan, providing hope for humanity's redemption. God's judgment on Adam, Eve, and the serpent. In the aftermath of Adam and Eve's disobedience in the Garden of Eden, God pronounced judgment on them in the serpent, outlining the consequences of their actions. This judgment, recorded in Genesis chapter 3, verses 14 through 19, reveals God's justice and mercy in response to sin. God's judgment began with the serpent, who had deceived Eve into eating from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Genesis chapter 3, verses 14 through 15, records God's words to the serpent, stating, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly, and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. This pronouncement of judgment on the serpent symbolizes the ongoing conflict between humanity and Satan, culminating in the ultimate victory of Jesus Christ over sin and death. God's judgment then turned to Eve, who had succumbed to the serpent's deception. Genesis chapter 3, verse 16 states, To the woman he said, I will make your pains in childbearing very severe. With painful labor you will give birth to children. Your desire will be for your husband and he will rule over you. This judgment on Eve highlights the consequences of her disobedience, including pain in childbirth and a disrupted relationship with her husband. Finally, God's judgment fell on Adam, who had also disobeyed God's command. Genesis chapter 3, verses 17 through 19 records God's words to Adam. This judgment on Adam reflects the consequences of his sin, including toil and hardship in his work and ultimately death. Despite the severity of these judgments, they also reveal God's mercy and grace. 
Despite their disobedience, God did not abandon Adam and Eve. He provided them with clothing made from animal skins. Genesis chapter 3, verse 21. Symbolizing the covering of their sin and foreshadowing the ultimate sacrifice of Jesus Christ for the sins of humanity. The significance of being expelled from Eden. The expulsion from Eden holds profound significance in the biblical narrative, symbolizing humanity's separation from God and the consequences of sin. This event, recorded in Genesis chapter 3, verses 22 through 24, marks a pivotal moment in human history, highlighting the severity of Adam and Eve's disobedience and the need for redemption. Cain and Abel. The story of Cain and Abel, found in Genesis 4, is a tragic tale of sibling rivalry that culminates in murder. This account reveals the destructive power of jealousy and the consequences of sin, as well as God's justice and mercy in the midst of human depravity. Genesis chapter 4, verses 1 through 2, introduces us to Cain and Abel, the sons of Adam and Eve. Abel was a shepherd and Cain was a farmer. In verse 3, we read that in the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord, and Abel also brought an offering, fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. God accepted Abel's offering but rejected Cain's. This discrepancy led to Cain's jealousy and anger towards his brother. Genesis chapter 4, verses 5 through 6 records God's response to Cain's anger, stating, Then the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must rule over it. Despite God's warning, Cain's jealousy consumed him leading to the tragic climax of the story. Genesis chapter 4, verse 8 describes the events that followed, stating, Now Cain said to his brother Abel, Let's go out to the field. While they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. God's response to Cain's sin was swift and severe. Genesis chapter 4, verses 9 through 12 records God's confrontation of Cain, stating, Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is your brother Abel? I don't know, he replied. Am I my brother's keeper? The Lord said, What have you done? Listen, your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Now you are under a curse and driven from the ground, which opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you work the ground, it will no longer yield its crop for you. You will be a restless wanderer on the earth, separated from his family and community. Despite his sin, God showed mercy to Cain by protecting him from immediate harm. Genesis chapter 4, verse 15 records God's promise to Cain, stating, But the Lord said to him, Not so. Anyone who kills Cain will suffer vengeance seven times over. Then the Lord put a mark on Cain, so that no one who found him would kill him. Cain's story serves as a sobering reminder of the destructive power of sin and the importance of controlling our emotions and desires. It also highlights God's justice and mercy in dealing with sinners, offering a path to redemption for those who seek it. Genesis chapter 4, verses 1 through 2, records the birth of Cain and Abel, stating, Now Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain, saying, I have gotten a man with the help of the Lord. And again, she bore his brother Abel. These verses highlight the joy and fulfillment that Adam and Eve experienced in becoming parents, as well as their recognition of God's role in the miracle of childbirth. The names of Cain and Abel are significant. Cain's name is derived from the Hebrew word quana, meaning to acquire or to possess, reflecting Eve's sense of acquisition or possession of a child. Abel's name, on the other hand, is derived from the Hebrew word hebel, meaning breathe, or vapor, suggesting a sense of transience or fleetingness. The birth of Cain and Abel, therefore, marks a pivotal moment in human history, illustrating the complexities of human relationships and the devastating consequences of sin. It serves as a cautionary tale about the destructive power of jealousy and the importance of controlling our emotions and desires. However, it also points us to the hope of redemption through Jesus Christ who came to save us from sin 
and restore us to a right relationship with God. The story of Cain's punishment, found in Genesis chapter 4, verses 9 through 16, is a poignant reminder of the consequences of sin and the justice of God. Cain's actions, motivated by jealousy and anger, led to tragic consequences that reverberate throughout history. This account highlights the seriousness of sin and the importance of repentance and forgiveness. Genesis chapter 4, verses 9 through 12, records God's confrontation of Cain, stating, And the Lord said to Cain, Where is Abel your brother? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And the Lord said, What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground. And now you are cursed from the ground, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you work the ground, it shall no longer yield to you its strength. You shall be a fugitive and wander on the earth. God's judgment on Cain was twofold. First, he was cursed and would no longer be able to farm the land successfully. Genesis chapter 4 verse 12 states, When you work the ground, it shall no longer yield to you its strength. This curse would make Cain's work difficult and unfruitful, highlighting the consequences of his sin. Second, Cain would be a fugitive and wanderer on the earth. Genesis chapter 4 verse 12 continues, You shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth. This punishment would separate Cain from his family and community, forcing him to live a life of exile and loneliness. Despite the severity of his punishment, God showed mercy to Cain by protecting him from immediate harm. Genesis chapter 4 verses 13 through 14 records Cain's words to God stating, Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, you have driven me today away from the ground, and from your face I shall be hidden. I shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth, and whoever finds me will kill me. Despite his remorse, Cain's punishment stood as a consequence of his sin. Genesis chapter 4 verse 16 describes Cain's life after his punishment, stating, And Cain went away from the presence of the Lord and settled in the land of Nod, east of Eden. This verse highlights Cain's life of exile and separation from God's presence, illustrating the devastating effects of sin on his life. The story of Cain's punishment serves as a sobering reminder of the consequences of sin and the importance of repentance and forgiveness. It highlights the justice of God in dealing with sinners. Cain's response to his punishment also highlights the need for true repentance. While Cain expresses remorse for his actions, there's no indication that he truly repented of his sin. True repentance involves not only acknowledging one's sin, but also turning away from it and seeking forgiveness. Cain's story serves as a warning against superficial repentance and the importance of genuine remorse and a desire to change. Chapter 7 Cain's Descendants After Cain was cursed for killing his brother Abel, he went on to have descendants who populated the earth. The story of Cain's descendants, found in Genesis chapter 4, verses 17 through 24, provides insight into the spread of sin and its consequences, as well as glimpses of human innovation and civilization. Genesis chapter 4, verses 17 through 24, lists the descendants of Cain, beginning with his son Enoch. The names and brief descriptions of Cain's descendants provide a glimpse into their lives and activities. However, the overall tone of this genealogy is one of sin and disobedience, reflecting the consequences of Cain's actions. One notable figure among Cain's descendants is Lamech, who is described as a polygamist and a murderer. Genesis chapter 4, verse 19 through 24 records Lamech's words to his wives, stating, Lamech said to his wives, Ada and Zillah, hear my voice. You wives of Lamech, listen to what I say. I have killed a man for wounding me, a young man for striking me. If Cain's revenge is sevenfold, then Lamech's is seventy-sevenfold. Lamech's actions and words demonstrate the continued spread of sin and violence among Cain's descendants. Despite the sinful nature of Cain's descendants, there are glimpses of human innovation and civilization among them. Genesis chapter 4 verses 21 through 22 mentions Jabel who was the father of those who dwell in tents and have livestock, and Jubal, who was the father of all those who play the lyre and pipe. These verses suggest that Cain's descendants were not without skills and abilities, but these were often used in sinful and self-serving ways. 
The story of Cain's descendants serves as a reminder of the spread of sin and its consequences. Despite God's judgment on Cain and his descendants, there is also a message of hope and redemption. Genesis chapter 4, verses 25 through 26 records the birth of Adam and Eve's third son, Seth, stating, And Adam knew his wife again, and she bore a son and called his name Seth. For she said, God has appointed for me another offspring instead of Abel, for Cain killed him. To Seth also a son was born, and he called his name Enosh. At that time, people began to call upon the name of the Lord. This passage highlights God's provision of a righteous line of descendants through Seth, who would ultimately lead to the birth of Jesus Christ. The Lineage of Cain The lineage of Cain, as recorded in Genesis chapter 4, verses 17 through 24, provides a glimpse into the early days of human civilization and the progression of sin in the world. While the descendants of Cain achieved great feats in terms of culture and technology, their story is also marked by a deepening moral decline and separation from God. Genesis chapter 4, verses 17 through 18 introduces us to Cain's descendants, stating, Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bore Enoch. When he built the city, he called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch. To Enoch was born Irad, and Irad fathered Mayujael. And Mayujael fathered Methushael, and Methushael fathered Lamech. This passage highlights the progress of civilization, as seen in the building of cities and the development of familial lines. Despite their achievements in worldly terms, the descendants of Cain were marked by a spiritual emptiness and a separation from God. This story serves as a cautionary tale about the dangers of pursuing worldly success at the expense of spiritual well-being. It also highlights the progressive nature of sin, which, if left unchecked, can lead to greater moral decay and separation from God. The story of Cain's lineage stands in contrast to the lineage of Seth, another son of Adam and Eve, whose descendants are described in Genesis 5. While the descendants of Seth also face challenges and struggles, the story is characterized by a desire to seek God and walk in His ways. This contrast highlights the importance of spiritual values and a relationship with God in the midst of a world that often values material success above all else. The story of Adam and Eve's descendants teach us that our actions have consequences, but God's grace is greater than our sin. It reminds us of the importance of faith and obedience to God, as demonstrated by Enoch and Noah. It also points us to Jesus Christ as the ultimate solution to sin and the source of hope for all humanity. Days of Adam after he fathered Seth were 800 years, and he had other sons and daughters. Thus all the days that Adam lived were 930 years, and he died. The birth of Seth and the continuation of Adam and Eve's lineage are significant for several reasons. First demonstrates God's faithfulness in preserving the human race despite the presence of sin and death. Despite the tragedy of Cain's actions, God provided a new beginning through Seth, ensuring that his plan for humanity would continue. Second, the birth of Seth and the naming of Enosh mark a spiritual renewal among Adam and Eve's descendants. Genesis chapter 4, verse 26 states, At that time, people began to call upon the name of the Lord. This indicates a return to worship and a recognition of humanity's dependence on God. Lastly, Seth's lineage ultimately leads to the birth of Jesus Christ, who is described as the son of Seth, the son of Adam, the son of God, in Luke chapter 3, verse 38. This highlights the redemptive purpose of Seth's lineage and underscores the hope of salvation that comes through Jesus Christ. Seth's lineage as recorded in Genesis 5, is characterized by a focus on God and a desire to walk in His ways. The genealogy of Seth highlights individuals such as Enoch, who walked with God and was taken by God. Genesis chapter 5, verse 24. This indicates a close relationship with the Creator and a commitment to living according to His will. The genealogy of Seth also includes Noah, who found favor in God's eyes and was chosen to build the ark that would save humanity from the flood. Genesis chapter 6, verses 8 through 9. The 
contrast between Cain's descendants and Seth's descendants reflects the broader theme of the Bible, which is the distinction between the way of the world and the way of God. Cain's descendants represent those who pursue worldly success and achievement at the expense of spiritual values. They are characterized by pride, violence, and a rejection of God's commands. On the other hand, Seth's descendants represent those who seek to walk in obedience to God and live according to His will. They are characterized by faith, righteousness, and a desire to please God in all they do. Lessons from the Fall The story of the fall in Genesis 3 provides valuable lessons that continue to resonate with humanity. It reveals the nature of sin, the tactics of temptation, and the promise of redemption. By examining this pivotal event in human history, we can gain insight into our own struggles and find hope in the promise of salvation through Jesus Christ. The account of the fall begins with the serpent tempting Eve to eat from the forbidden tree. One of the key lessons from the fall is the nature of sin. Sin is not simply an act of disobedience, but a rejection of God's authority and a desire to be like God. Genesis chapter 3, verse 5 records the serpent's deception stating, For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. This desire to be like God led Adam and Eve to disobey God's command, resulting in the consequences of sin. Another important lesson from the fall is the tactics of temptation. The serpent used subtle deception and manipulation to tempt Eve questioning God's goodness and distorting His commands. This serves as a warning to us to be vigilant against the schemes of the enemy and to rely on God's Word for guidance and protection. James chapter 1, verses 14-15 through 15 reminds us, Each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. Then, after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. Despite the consequences of sin, the story of the fall also offers hope in the promise of redemption. Genesis chapter 3, verse 15 contains the first prophecy of the Messiah. The story of the fall reminds us of our need for a Savior and the consequences of sin. It teaches us to be vigilant against the tactics of temptation and to rely on God's Word for guidance and protection. It also offers hope in the promise of redemption through Jesus Christ, who has conquered sin and death and offers us the gift of eternal life. The Nature of Sin and Its Consequences Sin is a concept that has been central to Christian theology from the beginning. It is portrayed in the Bible as rebellion against God's will and a failure to live up to His standards. Understanding the nature of sin and its consequences is essential for believers seeking to live a faithful life. The Bible teaches that sin entered the world through the disobedience of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Genesis 3 describes how they were tempted by the serpent and ate from the forbidden tree, leading to their expulsion from the garden. This act of disobedience is seen as the origin of sin in human history. One of the key aspects of sin is its deceptive nature. In Genesis chapter 3, verses 4 through 5, the serpent deceives Eve by questioning God's command and suggesting that eating the forbidden fruit will make her like God. This highlights the way in which sin can distort our perception of reality and lead us to believe falsehoods. The consequences of sin are far-reaching and profound. Romans chapter 6, verse 23 states, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. This verse highlights the ultimate consequence of sin, which is spiritual death and separation from God. Sin also has practical consequences in our lives, leading to broken relationships, suffering, and a sense of alienation from God. Despite the seriousness of sin, the Bible also teaches that God offers forgiveness and redemption to those who repent. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9 states, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. This verse emphasizes the importance of confession and repentance in the Christian life. The consequences of sin are not only individual, but also have an impact on society as a whole. Sin can lead to injustice, oppression, and conflict, as seen throughout human history. 
the Bible calls believers to work for justice and righteousness in the world, seeking to address the root causes of sin and its effects. Ultimately, the Bible teaches that sin can only be overcome through the power of Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 5, verse 8 states, But God demonstrates His own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. This verse highlights the central message of the Christian faith, which is that Jesus' death and resurrection offer forgiveness and redemption to all who believe. The importance of obedience and trust in God. Obedience and trust in God are foundational principles in the life of a believer. Throughout the Bible, we see examples of individuals who demonstrated unwavering faith and obedience, even in the face of great challenges. Their stories serve as powerful reminders of the importance of trusting and obeying God in all circumstances. One of the most striking examples of obedience and trust in God is found in the story of Abraham. In Genesis chapter 22, God tests Abraham's faith by asking him to sacrifice his son Isaac. Despite the difficulty of this command, Abraham obeys without question, demonstrating his unwavering trust in God's plan. Genesis chapter 22, verse 12, records God's response to Abraham's obedience, stating, Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God, because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Another example of obedience and trust in God is seen in the life of Moses. In Exodus chapters 3 through 4, God calls Moses to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. Despite Moses' initial reluctance and feelings of inadequacy, he ultimately obeys God's command and leads the Israelites to freedom. Exodus chapter 4, verse 31 describes the response of the Israelites to Moses' obedience, stating, And they believed. And when they heard that the Lord had visited the people of Israel and that He had seen their affliction, they bowed their heads and worshipped. The importance of obedience and trust in God is further emphasized in the teachings of Jesus. In Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 through 27, Jesus tells the parable of the wise and foolish builders, highlighting the importance of building our lives on a foundation of obedience to God's Word. Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 through 27 states, Therefore, Everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built this house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall, because it had its foundation on the rock. In the New Testament, the Apostle Paul also emphasizes the importance of obedience and trust in God. In Romans chapter 1, verse 5, Paul describes his mission to bring about the obedience of faith among all the Gentiles. This phrase highlights the connection between obedience and faith, suggesting that true faith is demonstrated through obedience to God's commands. Chapter 10. Redemption and Hope Redemption and hope are central themes in the Bible, weaving through its narratives and teachings to offer comfort, guidance, and assurance to believers. From the Old Testament to the New, God's plan for redemption and the hope it brings is a consistent message of His love and faithfulness to His people. In the Old Testament, the concept of redemption is often tied to the idea of liberation from bondage. One of the most powerful examples of this is the story of the Israelites' liberation from slavery in Egypt. Exodus chapter 6, verse 6 records God's promise to redeem His people, stating, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians. I will free you from being slaves to them, and I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with mighty acts of judgment. Another important aspect of redemption in the Old Testament is the idea of atonement for sin. Leviticus chapter 17, 11 states, For the life of a creature is in the blood, and I have given it to you to make atonement for yourselves on the altar. It is the blood that makes atonement for one's life. This concept of blood sacrifice as a means of atonement points forward to the ultimate sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross, who shed His blood to redeem humanity from sin. In the New Testament, redemption and hope are fulfilled in the person of Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 3, verses 23 through 24 states, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and all are justified freely by His grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. 
This verse highlights the universal need for redemption and the free gift of salvation through Jesus Christ. The hope that redemption brings is a central theme in the New Testament. Romans chapter 15, verse 13 states, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in Him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. This verse emphasizes the source of our hope, which is found in God's faithfulness and the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. The ultimate expression of redemption and hope is found in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3-4 through 4 states, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In His great mercy, He has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. The ultimate expression of restoration and reconciliation in the Bible is found in the person of Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 18-19 through 19 states, All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. This passage highlights the centrality of Christ's sacrifice in the process of restoration and reconciliation with God. The hope of restoration and reconciliation with God is a central theme in the Bible offering comfort and assurance to all who seek to be restored to a right relationship with Him. Revelation chapter 21, verses 4 through 5, paints a beautiful picture of this hope, stating, He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new, this vision of a new heaven and a new earth where God dwells with his people, offers hope to all who long for restoration and reconciliation with God. The story of the fall of Adam, Eve, and Cain is a tragic but instructive narrative that has profound implications for humanity. It reveals the nature of sin, the consequences of disobedience, and the need for redemption. Through their story, we learn important lessons about the human condition and God's plan for salvation. The fall of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden is a cautionary tale about the dangers of disobedience and the consequences of sin. Their decision to eat from the forbidden tree resulted in their expulsion from paradise and introduced sin and death into the world. This event highlights the fragility of human nature and our tendency to rebel against God's commands. The story of Cain and Abel further illustrates the devastating effects of sin. Cain's jealousy and anger towards his brother led to his first murder in human history, revealing the destructive power of sin in our lives. This tragic event serves as a warning against the dangers of unchecked jealousy, anger, and pride. Despite the gravity of their actions, the story of Adam, Eve, and Cain also contains elements of hope. God's response to their sin demonstrates his mercy and compassion. Even in their disobedience, God provides clothing for Adam and Eve and offers Cain a chance for redemption. This demonstrates God's desire to restore his relationship with humanity, even in the face of our sinfulness. Ultimately, the story of the fall points us towards the need for redemption. It foreshadows the coming of Jesus Christ, who would defeat sin and death through his death and resurrection. Through Christ, we are offered forgiveness in the hope of restoration with God. The story of the fall of Adam, Eve, and Cain is a powerful reminder of the consequences of sin and the need for redemption. It teaches us important lessons about obedience, humility, and the consequences of our actions. It also points us towards the hope of salvation through Jesus Christ, who offers us forgiveness and the promise of eternal life.